All right. So let's get started with Lunchtime Live with Colton and Brandon. So uh, last time we talked about um, cost effectiveness of outsourcing your projects. And uh, Colton did an amazing job as always. Um, some things kind of that are happening um, since then. Uh, we, we had, I think the, la the first day of spring happened yesterday or a couple days ago. And so we were blessed with uh, more rain and snow here in Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, also, other things in the news, uh, we've had um, some bank crashes and a lot of people are talking about chat GTP. So uh, who knows, maybe those will come up in the conversation, maybe not. Um, also, I did want to defend my position. Um, Sean was just talking about a video that might be out there on YouTube and it might implicate me in something that I did not do. <laughs> Um, you can go watch that, and you can see um, that that got muted. That wasn't me. Mute gate. Yeah, mute gate. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so uh, today we're going to talk about uh, swarming together, and so we'll get started. We'll let Colton kind of kick this off. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, Brandon. So, um, yeah, today we're going to talk about uh, swarming. So for you, uh, those of you who do not know what swarming is, um, swarming is basically a uh, collaborative work methodology um, within development where a group of developers work together on a single task, user store your feature at the same time, instead of working on separate tasks independently. Uh, many uh, development teams will divvy out you know, user stories or features um, to individual um, developers and have them all work um, individually uh, throughout the sprint. Swarming is where, again, you uh, have your group of developers work collaboratively on a single, again, task, user story, or feature. Uh, so yeah, that's basically the definition of swarming. So you're probably asking yourselves why. <laughs> What's the point of swarming? What's the goal of, of, of swarming? Um, we're really, swarming has a lot of pros. Uh, there are a few cons. Um, it doesn't always work for everything, but um, there's definitely scenarios where it's very, very helpful and it makes sense. So um, some of the main goals for swarming is uh, increased collaboration. Um, just really helps um, improve your teams um, working together, right? Um, sharing knowledge, um, working together, making sure that they're connecting every day. Um, when you swarm, you have to connect every day. You have to speak, every, you know, talk to each other um, and really work together. Um, so sometimes for teams, maybe they've been working together for a while and they've always been given out individual tasks and maybe that just means they're given a task and they go work by themselves, especially nowadays where people are working remote. Um, you can find that you have a team that's worked together, you know, for any amount of time that don't really know each other, don't ever work together just because they're working on the same project doesn't mean they ever work together. So it can definitely increase uh, collaboration. Uh, next is uh, knowledge sharing. So uh, again, if you're working on a team, you're always just kind of working in your own lane, in your own silo. Um, you're kind of working by yourself, right? So the only experience you're gaining, gaining or knowledge you're gaining is directly um, you know, with what you're working on or what you're doing. Um, when you're working with other uh, developers or other people on the team, you're gonna get that knowledge share, right? So you're gonna um, get information and knowledge from them. Maybe they've worked on something like this before and they have experience they can bring to you. Um, experience from people that have worked on things directly um, is always better than trying to read something online or doing you know some sort of research online. So that's a big one. Uh, next one is problem solving among team members. So again, you know, I think everyone agrees, you know, 10, 10 minds, five minds is always better than one. Um, everyone's gonna see a problem from a different angle. Um, so when you have you know five, six people all you know, all drill into a problem all at once, you're gonna have that brainstorm going of of looking all the all of these different angles, seeing pros and cons of different avenues. Um, and really just making sure you're doing it, uh, you know, solving this problem or building this feature um, in a way that makes sense, right? Where you're getting information from multiple people rather than just one person, right? Because if one person builds something out, they may say, hey, this is perfect, but they're not thinking of, you know, five or five or six use cases. Uh, they end up building it and they kind of put themselves in the corner, you have to go back and either fix it or change it. Um, really kind of the next thing as far as, you know, goals or, you know, what's the, the, what's the point of swarming? Um, it can actually really help with uh, the, co the quality of code produced, right? So again, kind of the same scenario, if you have multiple people um, involved, you're gonna uh, have a lot more people looking at that code, looking at how it's built, looking for those fail failure points, considering all those different uh, use cases that need to be handled. 
Um, the next thing, continuous feedback. So that's you know going to be multiple people inputting on it along as it goes, right? So even if you break it into pieces, you have uh, multiple eyes on that project. Um, and then just review throughout that development process. So, I mean, at the, at the end of the day, it's again, kind of the same thing over and over again, but you see these different uh, uh, pros of it, right? Is that you just have more eyes on it, which means there's more, there's more points uh, where you're gonna have somebody find either a problem with what you're doing or finding a better solution um, to the way that somebody else has suggested. So that's, you know, kind of kick us off. That's what swarming is and kind of the main um, goals of swarming. Um, another one that I actually realized I didn't note down here is is really um, completing things quickly, right? Um, so that's if you have something that needs to get done, you know, this week, maybe if one guy worked on it, um, it would take him a month. So instead, you can swarm that and get it done quickly. So it's really helpful for, you know, if there's a change in the market or your user base, you really figure out you need something done quickly. You can put your whole team on and get it knocked out quickly. So um, learning to swarm and being effective at it, even if you don't do it day to day, um, is extremely helpful so you can take to you know take care of those time sensitive and you know high priority items um, yeah yeah so um the way that i kind of see this and, and just so you know if, if you're new to this um kind of forum um i'm more into the business side i'm over the sales team here um colton is over project managers and so um normally what i try to do is just weave a little bit of business into it and when i think about swarming if you go way back to when i started um, in business altogether, um, it was a lot different. So uh, you would you would see a lot of offices that had, um, you know, they would have people would have their own office. They would have um, a lot of walls built up. And just over the years, um, in a couple decades, I know I'm uh, I'm aging myself there, but um, I've seen a lot of those walls come down. And a lot of that was uh, for the better because uh, in the past it was like a lot of people were just trying to do business out of their office and um, you know it was meant for privacy it was meant um, to not, not have a lot of collaboration or interruptions um, but it also put up walls that were really hard to break down um, and so I think on the business side of swarming um, that 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 became super important where you saw a lot of these you know uh, Google types and Adobe types where you know everybody, uh, now comes into the same room, they're working together, uh, they're collaborating on micro teams or whatever it might be. Um, and, and obviously that um, is paired with uh, the development. And you see a lot of parallels uh, just on the topic that we've talked about, um, whether it be swarming or uh, cost effect, whatever the, some of the ones in the past. Uh, but there is a correlation between the business aspect and the development aspect because uh, those principles, they make sense for all, all business together. So I think um, that's really important where swarming has kind of um, made that, what do you call it, a change or whatever. But mm -hmm. I think it's super important. Yeah, definitely. Like you said, it's um, I think it's kind of more of a uh, development you know, methodology, but I think it's made its way into a lot of different uh, you know, sectors. Um, you'll see more and more, like you said, less less individual office spaces and, you know, rooms with one person in it, you know, where they got the door shut, but more like open floor plans where people are, are open to collaborate with each other. Um, awesome. So kind of jumping into the next uh, point here is um, when, to storm, when to swarm, right? So maybe you're asking yourself, you know, okay, here's these pros, you know, it sounds all good, but, um, you know, maybe my team isn't swarming right now. Well, when should we swarm? What wonder, you know, wonder times that that makes sense. So, uh, I've got a, I've got four kind of main items that that I've listed here. Um, one is complex tasks, right? So, let's say we've got a really tricky um, task that we need to, uh, you know, take care of or accomplish. Maybe you've already assigned it to someone and they've struggled with it, or maybe you kind of look at your team and you don't see anyone that has the skill set to handle this task um, independently. So. Um, what you can do, right, is just put the whole team on it and work on it um, to, again, have all those different minds work together and uh, drum up ideas and, and work together to, to solve that problem. Um, you know, the complex tasks sometimes, right, you, you assign that to one person that can drag on and drag on. And, you know, instead you just put, you know, four or five people on it. You put your whole team on it. You get make that everyone's priority, everyone's focus for whether it be, a, you know, a day or two or maybe even a couple of weeks. Um, that's just going right, to get that kind of tidied up, um, you know, wrapped in a bow a lot quicker so you can move on to other items. Um, we've seen in the past with, uh, you know, other clients, um, 
where they, you know, you look and they have some someone on their team working and just dragging along on some task for months and months on a time. I um, mean, they're just struggling with it. They try to get help from other people, but those other people have their own priorities. So it's just never um, taken care of. Um, next, I already kind of hit on this one, but uh, time sensitive tasks. So, um, you know, maybe you're coming up on a deadline. Maybe, maybe you're already working your normal sprints. You're working your normal uh, schedule, uh, but you realize there's some big feature um, that maybe has already again been tasked out to somebody they're working on it but you're coming up on a deadline you actually really need this done by a certain date whether or you're going to like lose a client or maybe there's a license that's going to come up um, that's that's always a great time to swarm on and just get it taken care of um, next again i kind of already talked about it but knowledge sharing um, it's just a great way um, to make sure that knowledge is shared across your team so it's kind of an insurance policy in a way um, again we'll find you know, it's probably easiest when you're working with a development team to say, hey, I've got Paul, he is working on, you know, let's say our email functionality that's built into our CRM. Um, anytime something that comes up with building onto that email feature, we assign it over to Paul because Paul knows that feature inside out. So we just get it over to him, he knocks it out. Well, the issue with that is something happens to Paul, Paul leaves, all that knowledge is gone, right? So. Um, another helpful thing you can do right with, with swarming is even if you're just swarming with two people or three people, you can get them in with Paul and uh, they can work on that feature along with him and get that knowledge uh, about that feature and that functionality from, from that person. Um, next is just continuous improvement. Um, again, you know, if, if you feel like um, you've got guys on your team that are struggling in some avenues, um, you know, some people's strengths are other people's weaknesses. Um, that's that's a great way to kind of hone your team and try to polish everybody's skills end to end is you have them work again collaboratively work together um, you know somebody maybe that's strong in front-end development you have them working side by side um, directly on a task with someone that's strong in back-end development and kind of help those two hone their skills on either end um, of the sides so those are kind of my main points on when to swarm and um, i don't know if you have anything you want to add to that no I actually just kind of wanted to open up if anybody has questions typically we'll um allow you to add a, a, a comment or a question um, in the messages and we'll try to keep an eye on those. Um, or if you wanted to just chime in and you have some thoughts, um, you could do that as well, um, but feel free to do that. Awesome, awesome. Perfect. So kind of moving on to the next section we've got uh, here that I've got noted down is um, how to swarm, right? So we've talked about, you know, what is swarming? What's the point of it? When do you do it? Um, that's all good and all, but if you don't know how to do it effectively, it doesn't really you know, help you or your organization out. So um, I really got it broken down, down into like seven steps that we pretty much follow. Um, the first thing is to find the task or feature. So this is kind of what you're gonna do, hopefully in any kind of task or feature, you know, you're creating for your team, even if you're not swarming or not, um, is really defining that, right? Clearly outlining what is the task, you know, what are the requirements, you know, why are we working on this task? Who is it for? What problem is it going to solve? Um, what What's the acceptance criteria to consider this task completed? Um, you know, that's always important to do no matter what, but it's really, really important with the team that's swarming, right? We want to get rid of any kind of guesswork that that team has. And again, if you have, you know, if, if, if a ticket's not created clearly, like a task isn't defined clearly and you give that to one person and maybe um, that person wastes a day because they're kind of off in the wrong direction. Um, that's not good, but it's really, really not good if you have five people working on a task, right? And they miss a whole day because the task wasn't defined clearly. Um, so it's very, very important that first step um, when you're swarming, you have multiple people whose time you're, you know, you're taking up uh, working on this, this task or feature. Um, next is really identify the team members, make sure it's really clear. Um, who's going to be, um, you know, swarming these tasks, who's maybe not involved, who is involved. Um, after that is gathering the team. So making sure, you know, once you've defined who this team is, uh, making sure they're all brought together. So they're all on the same page that they're gonna be swarming and working on this together. Um, once you've gathered them, you wanna assign roles, make sure um, if there are roles that are needed, right? Of specific roles within this team that's gonna swarm on this, that that's defined or even um, breaking out, you know, ta individual tasks that roll up to this major task, making sure that those are assigned out to the correct people. Um, there's that term, you know, a dog with two owners um, will die, you know, or, or can die, because um, one person assumes the other one's going to feed the dog, and then you find out, you know, it's been a week, no one's fed the dog. Like my kids. Yeah. Because they're animals. <laughs> exactly. They're going to die. Exactly. So now you've got multiple people tied in, um, you know, there's going to be 
there's going to be that crowd mentality of assuming someone else is going to take care of something, right? So making sure that's happening. Um, working collaboratively. So again, maybe your team is set up where you only have, you know, one call a week. Everybody just picks up their tickets in the ticketing system. No big deal. Um, when you're swarming, you really want to make sure that, uh, you know, the team's collaborating tightly. So maybe you want to kick that up to a daily stand-up. Maybe you want to, you know, make sure everybody's inside of a chat channel communicating about this daily or whether they're inside of a ticket communicating daily. Um, something you really want to, you know, keep an eye on. If, if you have a team swarming on something and they're not communicating about that that daily um, at a minimum, you're, you're going to have problems, right? Um, next, monitor progress. Again, once you, you know, if you have multiple people working on one thing, um, if it's not monitored quickly, if they start veering off in the wrong direction, um, you know, they spend one or two days working on, you know, the wrong thing or digging into the wrong direction, um, instead of wasting one person's time, again, you're wasting five people's time. So that, that can mount pretty quickly. Um, and then lastly, you just want to make sure you review and refine um, often. So make sure um, you know, everybody's still on the same page, um, we're kind of reaffirm, reaffirming what's the point of this task, what's going on. Uh, I've seen in the past where a task is created to solve a problem. Um, so, you know, somebody puts together a solution and then they start kind of polishing that solution to make it better or maybe even more cool or slick. And then you kind of lose uh, vision of what the point of the task was. And they started kind of, again, veering off and <laughs> solving some other problem that doesn't even exist. Um, so yeah, so that's basically, you know, those are my steps for it. Those are steps that we follow um, here at ZipTech and what we follow with our, our, with our own team and something we help uh, coach our clients on that have um, software developers from their side involved. So um, as I was, obviously you can see that um, the onus is on Colton to take the majority of, of this um, webinar. So uh, that's fine. I, what I've done is I just go in and ask ChatGTP what I could say. And so everything that I say from here on out is ChatGTP. <laughs> uh, but I did have a thought. So here at ZipTech, um, especially in the headquarters here in Salt Lake City, um, basically what we're trying to do is solve a lot of problems from sales, project management, and also with the developers. And just to kind of open up and, and be a little bit transparent, but something that we've done recently, and I'll just use myself because um, I have a lot of flaws and I know what those flaws are. Um, I tend to be on more on the creative side. Colton tends to be more on the technical side, more analytical. And so recently what we've done is we've actually um, taken a look at some of those specific, um, I guess, talents or uh, things that we do better um, and really focus on those. Um, kind of like your superpowers is what we've, we've talked about. Um, so what are your superpowers? And then, you know, what are Colton's superpowers? And how can we even mesh between our teams and take some of those responsibilities off of each other um, so that we're optimizing each one of our departments? Um, so that's something that we've done that essentially kind of in a business sense of the swarming part of that is how, do we, how did we solve that problem with swarming? Uh, and it's actually, uh, there's some really huge benefits for that because uh, meetings that we've had uh, between us are kind of like, you know, what, let's identify what Brandon doesn't do really well. And is that something that, that Colton can do and vice versa? And so I think when you, when you pull everybody into a room like that and try to solve some of those problems, um, you really are, um, you're really finding those superpowers and 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 that can be super ben beneficial we're already seeing um some big leaps with that so i think it's it's effective yeah definitely yeah it can uh definitely expand beyond just software development you know again into different sectors or even yeah you talk about just getting in management or um even like in a sales team right this is a good way to work you know if you if you have a sales yeah. guy um maybe you have a sales guy that's doing great you know on email emails right and then not so good on the phone you have another guy that's great on the phone not good on email um, maybe you have them swarm and work together on like a new uh you know campaign or sequence right like a messaging and how how they do that both on phone and email right they can collaborate and, and work off of each other yeah awesome so uh next here i've got um listed like pros and cons um of, of swarming so a lot of what i'll hit on i've already kind of addressed in, in a sense but i always like to really Whenever I'm looking at like a new process of, you know, a new process to implement um, or even consider, I like to assess, right, the pros and cons of that. So 
Um, first off, the pros of swarming. Um, again, improved in co uh, collaboration, so it's just going to really help um, meld that team together, help them understand each other's strengths and weaknesses. Um, next, faster completion. Hit on that a few times already, right? Um, where you can you can get individual tasks done quickly. Um, next, better quality of work, right? You have multiple people involved. Um, you know, I, I you know obviously I think everybody kind of thinks, hey, you have a lot of people involved. That doesn't always equate to better work, right? That actually might make it messy. Um, so it is a little bit harder to manage when you're swarming, right? You got multiple people working together, so you do have to manage it more tightly. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, you've got the more people in there, that means you've got more strengths to work with. And in turn, as long as it's managed properly, you're going to have a better uh, quality of work. Um, and then next, um, and lastly, for the pros that I've got listed is, is again, knowledge sharing. Um, I can't tell you how many times um, we've worked with clients that either are coming to us to replace somebody or we're working with them and they lose somebody even while we're working with them. And then they find out, oh, no, all that knowledge is gone. That guy, <laughs> that guy had all the knowledge. Um, either he, and, and we've even seen too where maybe they're even being kind of held hostage by this person because that person says, you know, hey, I want a pay raise, you know, and maybe there's a debate there and they say, well, I can just leave and then you're going to, all this knowledge is going to go with me and they safeguard that knowledge. So it's another thing, you know, teams can kind of implement to make sure that, that knowledge is transferred out. You don't have mm -hmm. someone kind of <laughs> holding you hostage in any kind of sense. Um, Next, getting into cons, um, it is resource intensive. So like I had said before, right, you, you know, you've got, let's say, five people working on a task instead of one. Um, that's That means there's maybe four things that aren't getting done instead of that, right? And that, again, if, if they go off the wrong path, um, you know, every hour that would have been wasted is now multiplied by five. So um, that can be that can be pretty detrimental if it's not managed properly. Um, next is loss of individual productivity. Um, you'll find maybe you have a rock star on your team that can just take down tickets. Maybe you, let's just say, again, I'll keep that same team of five. Maybe you've got a rock star. That guy just kills it. He works by himself. You can give him anything and he takes care of it. Now you're going to put him on a project to swarm um, with four other people. And um, that really could slow him down oh, or her, right? <laughs> Sorry to keep saying that. Um, but that could slow that individual down, right? You're actually hampering them by having other people involved right putting that person on phone you know in meetings they don't you know they don't want to be in or you know taking their time or they're chatting or, or again joining meetings um, when they could just have their head down taking care of work knocking down tickets that can be negative too so something to be aware of maybe that person um, you don't have involved in that team maybe you have those four <laughs> swarm and you keep that person um, involved uh, on their own tasks um, next, lack of ownership. Like I said before, right? You can kind of get into that crowd mentality where everyone else assumes someone else is going to take care of it, or just nobody's worried about this task failing because the the blame is shared across five people. People aren't as worried about, you know, if if you fail and it's you know, if you have a task that's assigned directly to you and that doesn't get done, you know that's coming right back on you and you have no excuses. Um, if there's four other people that are with you. Um, one that, that that blame shared and then also you know you can always probably have some excuse where well i was waiting on so and so or i didn't get what i needed from another person um so that can kind of create problems make it a little bit harder to manage um communication challenges so again the more people you get involved the more you have um, the opportunities for you know errors you know in communication someone said one thing and that was miscommunicated um you know maybe one individual communicated something else and out of the, the other four people all understood that differently right and now they're just kind of working on different pages again that's why having daily meetings um, and, and managing it closely is extremely important with with swarming and then really overall um, swarming can be you know an effective uh, approach for software development teams um, in some instances um, either maybe as a team as a whole maybe it works for your team to just swarm every every item individually and just work through the list that way um, maybe there's times where you know you just need it for an individual task or feature um, and sometimes maybe it just never works for you you know maybe the way your team's set up it's just doesn't doesn't work maybe you've got you know three developers that do great on their own but whenever you get them to try to work together they just argue and you know aren't, aren't productive maybe they're just distracted they they meet every day and all they do is talk about things that don't have to do with the task you know that so um, there's there's definitely big pros and cons to it um 
really just to wrap up from my side um, before we get into any questions, if anyone has anything, um, is kind of like, what does this mean for ZipTech? You know, how does ZipTech do it? What does this mean for our clients? Um, at ZipTech, we do kind of a, a, a mixture of it, right? But um, we kind of naturally do it day to day because the way that we like to structure our teams is we don't like to structure too much with just full stack engineers. Um, we like to structure our team with front end engineers and back end engineers. Um, we like to do it that way because we've always kind of seen that people are either, you know, even if you are a full stack engineer, you're still going to tend to be more like right side brain or left side brain, right? So you're either going to be, uh, I've always found that there's never really a true full stack engineer. There's a front end engineer that can do back end coding, and then there's a back end engineer that can do front end coding, right? They always have a strength. Um, so what we like to do is we like to find, you know, if you're a back end engineer, let that person just do back end all day, you know, and same with the front end engineer. Um, and so with that being said, there's almost no projects that are 100% front end or back end. So naturally, we pretty much always have to swarm features. Um, sometimes that means there's just two people working on it. Sometimes we'll have a team, you know, that's five, six people, and we'll swarm an individual um, task that way. And then, you know, since we have that team structure, it really helps us to be able to work with our clients to build out a normal sprint schedule, hit those hit those dates, you know, hit those goals. Um, but then when they come up with something that needs to be done quickly, um, we're already kind of seasoned in practice at swarming. So when we need to, you know, instead of having our team work on 10 tickets this sprint, you know, across five, six people, um, we need to all collaborate on a single ticket, um, sing, single task. Um, our team's really already prepared for that. So um, it's something we kind of do day in and day out and are pretty, pretty um, practiced with. But um, yeah, I don't yeah. know if you have anything else. <laughs> no, I was just going to say, it looks like we have a uh, record here. Um, I guess because we don't have any questions, that means Colton did a perfect job. Yes, I covered it perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> So um, Colton has a lot of experience with probably over 200 projects um, in his history here at ZipTech. And so um, I think he made a good point. It doesn't, just because just because we're saying it doesn't mean we believe that's the only way or the best way or the best way for you or whatever. Um, I think there's lots of ways to do things. We're just trying to give as much information as possible, kind of what our experiences are and what we see in the market. Um, if that applies to you, great. If if not, and if you have any other questions, um, you know you can always go to the website, uh, check out some things there. Um, you could reach out to us there, um, call us. You could set up some time with myself or with Colton, and we could really get into the weeds with uh, maybe some of your projects or things like that. So uh, feel feel free to do that. Keep that in mind. And we're kind of at the end here, so um, I don't know if there's anything else. I don't. I still don't see any questions. So. If not, I'm, that, that pretty much wraps it up. Yeah. Sean, you got anything? No, I'm all good. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks all for right. joining, guys. Yeah. Thanks, everybody, for showing up. We'll see you next time.